Hi, y'all. This is an open letter to David Pakman, so please send it along to him, and you'll see why I want you to send it along to him in just a minute. Uh, I'll let him talk, and then we'll get to it. Uh, this story broke last week, and there's now an update to it. The backstory is that an Oklahoma court late last week decided that state law doesn't really criminalize forcible oral sex with a victim who's completely unconscious, and it's... Okay, uh, and he explains uh, and says several different times in different ways that this conduct is of the type he just described, that it's not criminalized. All right, uh, Mr. Pacman, you style yourself as a show that talks about the news and politics, and I want you to think very carefully about what it is you just said. You just said that Oklahoma does not criminalize uh, that behavior. And when you say something is not criminalized, you're saying that it is lawful. Now, you, uh, whenever you talk about sex crimes and you think that some act that should be illegal isn't illegal, please email me first because you're almost certainly wrong. In fact, you will be wrong about that conduct. It will be unlawful. Um, and whenever you tell someone that behavior is lawful, you must presume that some subset of people will engage in that behavior. Some subset of people only restrain their conduct because they think there is a statute or because there is a statute that says they should not do it and they don't want to go to jail because of the penalty of doing whatever bad conduct it is. So when you tell someone, you know, you have hundreds of thousands of followers, some of whom will live in Oklahoma, not all of whom will be moral, uh, morally perfect angels. When you tell them that it is lawful, that it is not a criminal offense in the state of Oklahoma to engage in uh, forcible oral, oral sodomy when a person is passed out, you should presume that some subset of people will engage in that behavior. In other words, you should presume that you are endangering some people by telling would-be perpetrators who are only not perpetrators because it is a statute so they believe against their conduct against that conduct um, you are endangering these people because you're saying to their would-be perpetrators that until the uh, Oklahoma legislature acts this behavior is not a criminal offense in Oklahoma and you're just uh, quite wrong so the case went up to the uh, the Court of Criminal Appeals and uh, well I'll just read from their decision it's very short. The state's sole proposition of error is that the trial court erred in ruling that forcible oral sodomy cannot occur where a victim is so intoxicated as to be completely unconscious at the time of the sexual act of oral copulation, finding no error. The state's appeal to this court is denied. The legislature's inclusion of an intoxica intoxication circumstance for the crime of rape, uh, 21 Oregon, I'm sorry, Oklahoma statute, section 1111A4, is not found in the five very specific requirements for the commission of the crime of forcible sodomy, 21 Oklahoma Statute, Section 888B. As set forth in uh, some case law, we will not, in order to justify prosecution of a person for an offense, enlarge a statute beyond the fair meaning of its language. So the, uh, they gave a citation to a statute. The sole uh, issue to be de decided in that case is whether or not the trial court was right for saying that this particular conduct does not violate this particular statute. It might as well have been a jaywalking statute or a murder statute or a burglary statute. The facts of this particular crime do not meet the elements of this particular statute. This is not saying that that conduct is not unlawful. It's saying that there is one statute that the prosecutor said it violated and it doesn't actually violate. So let's look at some uh, Oklahoma state law. In a Title 21 is their crimes and punishments, and two chapters are relevant here. Chapter 45, which covers rape, abduction, carnal abuse, and seduction of children. And then uh, Chapter 34, which covers bigamy, incest, and sodomy. In the case you're talking about, the prosecutor originally had two counts. The first count was uh, rape in the first degree, or in the alternative, rape in the second degree. The second count was forcible oral sodomy under Section 888B. Uh, clearly, it does not violate uh, it does not, not violate the rape statute 1111A4 because it is neither vaginal nor nor anal penetration. So that was dismissed. Uh, um, so that left count two. It doesn't violate that statute either. This is not a case of of the legislature not having laws that criminalize something. This is the case of an incompetent prosecutor who's incapable of looking at a set of facts and saying it oh, A happened, B happened, C happened, and then looking at the statute and saying which statute covers A, covers B, and covers C. He chose, out of the several statutes uh, on various sex crimes, he chose two statutes that don't fit. So uh, chapter, in chapter 34 you have bigamy, incest, and sodomy, which is the forcible oral sodomy, not the right one. If you go back up to chapter 45, rape, abduction, carnal abuse, and seduction of children, you find the rape statute, which didn't fit, but you also find 
uh, section 1123. So this is in the same section as rape. So if you're reading the rape statute, which is 1111, and you go down uh, 12, uh, thir uh, 12 statutes, it's right there. 111, I'm sorry, 1123. Lewd or indecent proposals or acts to children under 16 and sexual battery, which reads 21 Oregon statute, I'm sorry, Oklahoma statute section 1123B. No person shall commit sexual battery on any other person. Sexual battery shall mean the intentional touching, mauling or feeling of the body or private parts of any person 16 years of age or older <clears throat> in a lewd and lascivious manner, one, without the consent of that person. The conduct here is perfectly unlawful. It is a Class A felony. It, cover, it carries uh, 10 years in prison. I said 20 in a previous video of Dr. Uh, Christy Winters on this. I was wrong there. It's 10 years. If the person is over 16, it's 20 years. If the person is under 16. So 16 will get you 10. Under 16 will get you 20. Bear that in mind if you're in Oklahoma. If you're in Oklahoma, it is perfectly unlawful to engage in oral sodomy against a person who has passed out. Uh, the, only dist the only thing to be arbitrated is whether or not where you live you will have a competent prosecutor who is able to read the statutes and say this statute doesn't apply I won't charge that this statute doesn't apply I won't charge that and go through that until he goes until he he happens upon the miraculous statute where he goes ah this statute does apply and I will charge that this is not a problem for the uh, this is not a, a problem of the, le the legislature not thinking through various laws this is a terminological issue and an issue of the prosecutors not knowing his own state laws. That is his fault. Um, whether or not he can bring a, a charge for this in the future, I don't know uh, how that works in, in Oklahoma. I haven't read into it. Uh, Mr. Packman, I am former law enforcement. Please, in the future, before we go around advising people that some kind of sex crime is lawful conduct in some state or other, email me first so that way I can point you out uh, the statute that says you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, thereby helping protect would-be victims by making sure that people remain, uh, remain thinking, uh, would-be perpetrators remain thinking that there is in fact a statute that prohibits them from doing this and the whatever deterrent effect that statute has, has uh, had beforehand, it will continue to have instead of the case that you have now where in Oklahoma you have told them that they, if, they engage, if they engage in this conduct before the legislature acts, they have not violated a state law, they have engaged in lawful conduct, thereby risking the safety of would-be victims. Alright, have a great day.